Body language is overrated. Unless you get it wrong. Good body language is often just a case of communicating naturally. But what gets in the way of communicating naturally can be when we're feeling insecure, nervous, feeling in a pressure or high stakes situation. And often these feelings occur when you're standing on stage speaking. What I'm going to share with you in this video is some of the key body language mistakes that come out when people feel a little bit nervous or insecure on stage and thinking about how to have more productive, natural body language to help your speaking rather than hinder it. You may have seen Amy Cuddy's wildly successful TED talk on power poses. When the research first came out into power poses, a lot of people jumped on it and started taking it a bit too much to heart. And a really comedic example of this was at one of our political party conferences here in the United Kingdom. It was the Conservative Party poll conference and they'd clearly heard about this paper and their uh, spin doctors and media managers and, and speech directors and all the kind of backroom team that they had, had clearly told them to double down on these power poses. And what this led was just ridiculous on stage looks of <laughs> men with legs shooting to opposite ends of the room, these arms outsplayed, these ridiculously barrel chested figures looking a little bit like, hey, Johnny Bravo, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> and it just looked atrocious. That is an example of bad body language where something is not giving the impression that you desire. And often we come to this not through bad coaching, but just through that not so good internal state. We want you to avoid those mistakes that leave those bad impressions. And there's three common mistakes that I see in beginner speakers that we're gonna break down for you in this video. The first mistake is a Star Wars reference. Shields up. Shields up is when people are speaking and they are putting barriers between themselves and the audience. And this can take all sorts of different forms. It can be the arms crossed in various ways. They can be putting objects, props in front of them. Sometimes it's even bits of furniture hiding behind a podium or a desk or a table. The reason why shields up is not helpful. When we are trying to connect with someone, we connect with someone when they are open and expressive. And when you're going shields up, it is blocking that. And some body language people tell you, uh, you know, this shows that someone is, is lying or being dishonest. That's not necessarily the case. In fact, it's usually not. But what it does do is it does close off that connection and that rapport building that you as a speaker are trying to do with the audience. We shields up because when we're in front of people, we're feeling a little bit of pressure, a little bit of insecurity, and we want to protect ourselves. We want to protect that vulnerability. And of course, the way that we connect is through that vulnerability. So for this first mistake, all you're trying to do is just Break those shields. Make sure you are not putting barriers between you and the audience. Once those barriers are removed, that channel of connection is going to improve. Mistake number two. Every day I'm shuffling. This is when we have the shuffle on stage that isn't as beat bopping as the party rock anthem. This takes form in two separate ways. We have the rocking back and forth, like a boat on the wave, or we have the leaning tower of Pisa. The reason why you want to avoid this type of body language, you are trying to create conviction and certainty in what you're saying. And if your body looks unstable, then your message comes across as unstable. So you want to get a nice planted position when you're delivering. And this isn't to say that you can't move. 
there is a lot of very purposeful movement you can do around stage and those are subjects that I cover in, in other videos on how you use the stagecraft of purposely moving. But when you aren't doing purposeful movement, you want to be planted. So you've got those, those feet shoulder width apart, keeping etched in in the stage to stop you from rocking and rolling in a way that the audience won't want to jive along to. I've got one more body language tip to share with you today. Before I do so, if you're wanting to find out more about body language and thinking about how you use body language as a speaker, then I can direct you to my Amplify online course. This course helps aspiring speakers create engaging speeches and deliver them with excellence. It's a 12 month program that takes you step by step along your speaking journey, all done at your own pace. In the course, we have a whole module on body language. So if you want to go a lot more further into this subject, we have a whole module on that. And there's 11 other months of great material to enjoy in the course as well. To subscribe to the course, you can either pay an upfront payment of $297, or you can pay 12 monthly installments of $29. What I'd like to offer to you today as a little thank you for watching this YouTube and as a little kind of pat on the back for coming here and working on your speaking, I've got an offer code for you. This will allow you to get your first month in the program instead of $29 is going to be $1. So it's essentially a one month trial to come in, see what the course is like, see if it's going to be right to help you along your, your speaking and development journey. To activate that $1 trial, the link to the Amplify course is in the description below. If you click on the link, that'll take you to our homepage. There you can find out more information about the course, all of the different modules that we cover. If you click the purchase button and select the monthly drop down, 12 times $29, go through to the account page, you set up your email, password, usual stuff. When you go to the checkout page and you're entering your card details, there'll be some blue text there that says, do you have a coupon code? Good news, you've got a coupon code. Enter the code YouTube because you have come from YouTube, nice and easy to remember. Enter the code YouTube and that will take your first month's payment from $29 down to $1. So you can come in for the first month, see what it's like. You can cancel those payments at any time. So if at any time during the process you feel that the course isn't what you're looking for or you don't wish to continue for whatever reason, you are able to cancel those installments. So you can get to the end of your first month before you make the, the decision to continue in the course, you can decide, is this something that I wanted? If it is, great, your subscription will automatically continue. If not, you can cancel it. It's only cost you $1 to find out. Click the link in the description, use the code YouTube to get that $1, well not free trial, pretty close to free trial. And now we're gonna cover the third and final body language mistake. The hills of eyes. <laughs> Number three is all about your eye contact. The mistake that a lot of beginner speakers make with their eye contact is they use a scattergun approach where the eyes are going across the audience, quite often not making eye contact, but more halo contact with some imaginary halo that audience members have. The reason why this is a body language mistake is because eyes are another key part of where we form that connection. So when we've got shields up, that is blocking the connection. We want to drop those shields. We also want to be making and engaging that eye contact. Have you ever had a conversation with someone who just, they couldn't look you in the eye? They're kind of staring over your shoulder or looking down at your feet. It's really off-putting, isn't it? When you're you're trying to form a connection, you're trying to speak to them, and they're just not looking at you, it's a barrier, isn't it? What you want to do instead is, rather than scattergunning everywhere, you want to find an audience member, meet their gaze, 
hold as you're speaking, move to another audience member, find their gaze, hold as you're speaking, picking out people one by one, front of the room, back of the room, sides of the room, making sure that everyone feels included. You might feel that your scattergun approach is making everyone feel included. Oh yeah, I've, I've looked at everyone. But you haven't given anyone that depth of connection. It's much better to go through a systematic process to make everyone feel a deep connection rather than doing a superficial process very fast. Those are a couple of body language mistakes that you want to, to think about and some suggestions on how to productively change them. And that's the word that I'm going to use. Body language, and especially once you start to watch experts on YouTube, <laughs> like me, sometimes it can be very prescriptive. This is the thing you should do. You should use this hand motion or you stand in this way. And that's something that not only do I not subscribe to, but frankly, the, the science and the research doesn't really support. Good body language is an extension of your own natural expression. And the reason why these mistakes are mistakes is because for various reasons, they are stunting your natural expression. By eliminating these mistakes, finding a different way to communicate in those moments, you're going to have more connection with the audience, you're going to feel more confident as you're doing so, and your speeches will have more impact.